Prime Minister, many thanks for joining us today. Uh, Belgium is assuming very large potential liabilities uh, in taking over the domestic unit of Dexia. What is the risk of a downgrade in Belgium's credit rating? I, I personally think the risk is not so high. Uh, when you see our debt ratio, it used to be 96, 97 uh, percent GDP point. Uh, I think it will raise now to 98. So uh, I think the, the, the raise is limited. On the other hand, there was no alternative. I mean, when you have a systemic bank that is uh, on its way to, to a collapse, you have to intervene, and uh, so we intervened, uh, I think, in fair conditions. Yeah. Um, now, what additional steps will uh, the current government, or especially the new government, uh, have to take in terms of budget cuts in order, in order to um, reinforce confidence on the markets and to secure the credit rating? I think the, the most important point is to stick to what we promised to, uh, to Europe. We committed ourselves to have, for the next year, a uh, uh, deficit, uh, maximum deficit of 2.8 uh, GDP points. We have in 2011 two uh, 3.6 uh, deficit in GDP points and so we have to draft a budget in the coming weeks with a maximum deficit at the federal level of 2.4. Now the, uh, the Euro <coughs> crisis summit has been pushed back by one week until October 23rd. Why? I had a conversation this morning with the uh, permanent president of the European Union Council, the European Council. I think he's right. Uh, we have to prepare the Council in a very good way and we have to have strong decisions. And so I think the period between the summit yesterday in Berlin, uh, Mrs. Merkel and uh, Mr. Sarkozy met, and our uh, European Council meeting next week is too short. I think on the basis of some proposals that are circulated now, uh, we have to have some bilateral talks and, and uh, work out some uh, draft conclusions which give a strong signal, uh, especially uh, uh, in order then to meet in Cannes, the G20 people will meet there and to take strong decisions. Now you mentioned a conversation this morning with President Van Rompuy. He today said that this summit will deliver a comprehensive solution. What are the elements of that solution? Well, we will discuss on that, of course, uh, in the coming days and, and couple of weeks, and, and uh, on the summit. And it is to, it's the task of Mr. Varompe to draft proposals, to put them on the table, and we will we will discuss on it. But I think it's very essential that there is a strong signal in terms of the volume of money in the uh, stability funds, and that uh, also the monitoring of the economic performances of the uh, member states of the eurozone have the monitoring has to be more strict. Uh, I think it, it's in that those two fields that we have to find uh, solutions. You spoke of a strong signal on the volume of money in the stability funds. Is there an agreement now in principle to leverage up the EFSF so it can deploy much greater firepower? Belgium is always acting as a honest broker to find a decision, to, to be able to, to take a decision and so to find a compromise. As far as Belgium is concerned, we are prepared to add money to the stability fund. We were one of the first countries to implement the decisions of the 21st of July in terms of the scope of the stability fund and so we are prepared to add money. Uh, the world around the Eurozone has to know that we will defend the Euro with whatever means it need, is needed. Um, how big um, should the EFSF be or how much money should it be able to deploy uh, in order to convince the markets that Europe means... It has market. to be as big as necessary to dissuade uh, people that want to speculate against the euro. Now, Greece is uh, flirting uh, perilously close to default. Will this summit discuss bigger write-downs of Greek bonds, recalling that on July 21st that there was an agreement uh, to pursue write-downs of 21%. Are we now looking at something bigger than that? Anyway, I think it's only one part of the story. The other part of the story, which is also very important, is to stimulate the Greek economy uh, to resume growth in Greece. Uh, we are in a recession, and uh, in terms of the uh, tax incomes and in terms of economic activity, it is very uh, obvious that we have to uh, invest also in relaunching the Greek economy. We already asked for that and for special efforts from the European Union side. Some months ago, there was a promise that uh, 
uh, European structural funds would uh, deliver some more money and, and the way it would be invested, uh, it would be possible to invest it in Greece would be enhanced. I think it's time now, it's time to deliver. The European Commission, the, the Eurozone has to invest in relaunching the Greek economy. And the question of write-downs going beyond 21%? Uh, it is a very sensitive item. I think you, you can't, uh, uh, every, every European Council, change the percentages and, and uh, uh, bring supplementary problems to, uh, to banks. Uh, I think the most important thing to do now is to uh, add to the, uh, let's say, uh, cut problem. You have to add a rela relaunching of the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, moving to banks, uh, Europe's plan right now seems to be that each country will aid uh, its own banks and the EFSF will step in only as a last resort. Is that the right way to solve the problem? I think in the, in the, in the future, maybe not in the near future, but uh, we will we will need to have a uh, a system that gives a very uh, a very strong answer to the problem that some banks are too big for one country to be saved by one country, and so this is all. This is only possible to solve that problem by having the kind of European integration, European cooperation uh, we need and we already advocate it. Uh, in, to give some specific examples, in this country we had to save uh, the Fortis Bank. Uh, it was a Fortis Bank, we had a cooperation with the, with the Dutch people, with the Luxembourg people, with the French. Uh, last weekend we had to uh, intervene for Dexia, and Dexia is a, is a Belgian-French uh, bank, and so we had to cooperate with, with our surrounding countries. Uh, and so I think that, um, generally, sp from a general point of view, Europe should uh, cooperate more to uh, give the possibility to the different member states of the Eurozone to save the banks, but with, in, uh, with starting from a stronger cooperation between the member states. And one final question. Uh, tomorrow, Slovakia will vote on the upgraded uh, EFSF. There as of now, there's no agreement in sight uh, within the Slovak coalition. What would the consequences be if Slovakia uh, vetoes the upgrade at EFSF? Well, first of all, I hope that uh, Iveta, my colleague, can convince the majority in Slovakia and Bratislava. If this would not be the case, then I think we have to collectively, uh, with the 16 other member states of the Eurozone, we have to uh, take over the burden uh, and we have to defend uh, the, uh, the Euro. Prime Minister, many thanks for talking Thank to you. us today.